Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. And first of all, if this is your first time hearing the podcast, go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and you can subscribe to the show there or look for Tom Ray's Art Podcast on any of the services where you get podcasts. And uh, so today's show, normally I'd be talking to artists, but today is an interesting kind of different sort of episode. It's a different one in the sense of what if you had a service that you used as a creator and you had the ability to talk to the people running it and find out what they're gonna do with it. Well, that is what this is about. This is actually an episode, while it's about music, it is for creators of all kinds that use the internet for the stuff they make. Say, pictures, photos, paintings, drawings, prints, music, all that kind of stuff. Because while this service that I'm talking to is helping musicians, one of the things we have a conversation about is the future of the web, the future of art on the web, the future of what can be built from companies that run the web, like Mozilla, uh, who makes Firefox, who are trying to help creators actually find a way to monetize the fact that their stuff can be shared, their stuff can be used. But how can you do that without advertising? That's what they want to do. Yes, there's Patreon, but what if you have to go to Patreon to use that? You have to go to Patreon to be a patron. You have to sign up for one service. What if there was a service that actually worked with other companies like Google, like Facebook, like Instagram, where you post your videos, your music, your pictures, your artwork, and you got paid for people looking at it because they are part of a service. They sign up once and the places that actually work with this service can go, this was viewed, this was downloaded on Facebook, on Instagram, it was downloaded from Google Pictures. This And this is all just talking about the future. This isn't there yet, but it's a conversation that's actually starting, actually happening, actually trying to be figured out. It's about your stuff on the web, no matter where it is, being licensed, attributed, and monetized for you, to you. Stuff like that. It's so it's and I haven't even talked about what this person does yet, but what we're talking about, the conversation we get into, it's kind of in the middle. We talk about there's services called Coil, and there's another service called uh, Grant for the Web, and these are all being looked at and used and in discussions with the Mozilla Foundation, um, other things like that. It's this, this is a conversation where even talking to the guy, my mind opened up about what could be done. And if people are actually backing this and talking to the big companies like Google, like YouTube, and creating a service where just by using and looking at the web, people can sign up for this thing and no matter where your stuff is, and it knows that your work has been looked at, it's kind of like how musicians get paid for being listened to on Spotify. This is like a Spotify sort of model for the web, for creators, for people that take pictures, for people that make it, that's what this is all about. That's why if you listen to this, while we talk about the service that I wanted to talk to him about is one that was for me, music, which was the free music archive. The free music archive for my band was a huge thing. It got our music into short films. It got us into the background music of YouTube. And that was the free music archive. It was owned by the uh, WFMU radio station in New Jersey. And sadly, a few years ago, they shut it down and it went up for sale. This person is actually in the Netherlands, the person I'm talking to today. So I'm talking to someone overseas and he runs a company called Tribe of Noise. These are the people who bought the Free Music Archive. And he tells me the story about how actually someone else bought it first and then didn't know what to do with it or realized it wasn't something that they could use themselves. And then they came back and bought it from them. And now they are setting up the Free Music Archive to open up again, to be able to distribute music music for net labels and other bands to upload their stuff. But they are also going to be off offering licensing for these bands. And they're still free. You can download the music for free. It's all under Creative Commons, but it can also be bought for other things. It, it, it's a great conversation. So if you are an artist and actually always worry about your, your pictures being taken on the web or 
your artwork being used somewhere on the web. This conversation is about that. This conversation is about the future of the web, what it could be, what people who actually have the influence to do so. This entrepreneur actually is trying to bring these people together through this service that kind of did that and go, what more can we do with it? And that's why I love this conversation. That's why I'm so happy I got the chance to talk to this person today who is now taking over the Free Music Archive with his company, Tribe of Noise. So check out this episode. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you are on my mailing list, send me an email about what you think of this episode. Leave a comment uh, or send me a message. Email me at the website, tomraiswebsite.com. And uh, the sites that are being run by this particular company here are uh, freemusicarchive.org, tribeofnoise.com, and also look up the services COIL and look up Grant for the Web and check out what their actual plan is or their business model and what they're already trying to do. So here's my episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast with the new owners of the Free Music Archive. My name is Hessel. I actually founded a music company, Tribe of Noise, and part of Tribe of Noise is Free Music Archive. You're in another country? I am. I'm based in the Netherlands, so in Europe. Nice. I don't know if I've talked, I think I've talked to maybe one or two people on, on a podcast that I used to do, which is another reason why I'm talking to you here. Another podcast that I used to do was called Music Manumet, and we talked with uh, Creative Commons musicians all over the all over the globe. And one of the reasons we were able to do that was because of the Free Music Archive, which my band also was a big fan of. And we were also a Creative Commons band. So a uh, little backstory for me. Sorry. I, I was like, I'm going to ask you a question. And now I'm just rattling off all of my background. But let me get that out of the way first. Um, we were actually for my band was doing a podcast and we were actually interviewing Cheyenne Homan, who was the creative director or the what music marketing director of uh, Free Music Archive. And right after we got done with the interview, she basically let me know that uh, she got like the next day, she found out that they were shutting it down. And everybody was like, what are we going to do? And then you guys came in. So tell me the story about what, how you guys decided to uh, take over the Free Music Archive, I guess. Uh, so my, my, my background is, is also in um uh it, it's actually not in the music space but but like uh, roughly in 2008 uh together with with a bunch of folks we we started a platform in uh in europe called tribe of noise and um to do that correctly and the the, the whole thing was to get music uh from independent artists to videographers and uh people in need for music licensing right and but to get that like like properly you have to know a thing or two about licensing yes and a few years before that i actually wrote a couple of books and i published some of these books under a creative commons license so i know i knew a thing or two about creative commons and i was in touch with the creative commons headquarters in san francisco in uh, i think roughly from 2005 ish onwards and uh, so we kept in touch. So when Free Music Archive ran into some like financial issues, they actually reached out to us, so uh, 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 Creative Commons headquarters, and said like, you're an entrepreneur, you are in this music space, you love Creative Commons, why don't you help or you know financially you know start donating money to to Free Music Archive so that they can move forward and continue? Yeah, um, I was tempted, but but. Of course, I do want to learn a little bit about the business model. Like, you know, am I just throwing money at it? And then, you know, would they come back to us like every single year saying like, donate more? Or was there a, a real, like, you know, a, a model so that that Free Music Archive could be sustainable and the people on Free Music Archive, like the curators and, and people like Cheyenne, and, you know, that, that there was some kind of model to, uh, uh, to make it sustainable for the future. Um, so I think we started having those discussions in 2018, probably roughly at the same time when when you had that phone call from Cheyenne saying like we you know we have to shut down, and um, we actually talked to the owners that was WFMU the radio station, mm -hmm. 
And uh, we said, like, you know, we really want to move forward together with you. And we actually want to put some money in there. Uh, but we weren't the only ones having this discussion with uh, WFMU about the future of Free Music Archive. There was actually another company in New York um, called KidSplit. Oh, yeah. And, and KidSplit, um, somewhere down the line, offered more money. So they actually acquired Free Music Archive from WFMU. And um, and they thanked us for the help and the support and you know all the all the the good words that we put out there. Uh, so the only thing I could do was reach out to the CEO of KidSplit and say like, "Congratulations! Mm-hmm. Um, you probably have no idea what you just bought, but uh, if you ever run into any issues or if you ever want to sell it again, uh, give me a call because you know we are really proper like a music community. We are in love with Creative Commons. We know what this is about." We know how to 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 run a business like this, um, and then it went quiet for nine months. I'm, I'm and vaguely it, remembering all this because yeah, yeah, that's right. In 2019, they actually uh, uh, made a phone call to us saying, "Like, okay, you were right. There is a big community behind Free Music Archive. We weren't aware of this, and uh, we actually renegotiated the deal, and uh, we could acquire in." September 2019, we actually could acquire Free Music Archive in a way that we could actually support Free Music Archive into hopefully, you know, the next couple of decades. So uh, we weren't like the original acquisition partner for Free Music Archive. Mm-hmm. There was actually, it was in between. I know what, what it was is as it was shutting down, as if as it is with everything that shuts down, they shut down for a reason because... Uh, even if people love it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they use it or support it, you know, and that happens. It's, and they did fundraisers and they were about to start a new fundraiser or fund drive uh, to do it. And that was, they decided not even to go into it. And that's when they were closing it down. The, the thing that you brought up, which is what I think makes free music archive cool. And that's what I want to know more about is uh, its involvement with WFMU was that not only, was it the curation from them? But then bringing in artists, they would go like, hey, you upload or you suggest a bunch of really cool stuff. We just want to involve you in it and you can add more music. The curation is the key. Like there's there's sites that are also Creative Commons like Gemendo, which has become a lot more it, – it's changed its business model over the years where it's doing licensing outside of copyright, but also free to use uh, and selling that way. And then with you guys – what are your plans for the curation? I know that you recently opened it up to the curators and I've been checking it out because I'm a curator on there. So what, what is your plan, much like the FM, WFMU running it for um, curating the music, finding the music and all that kind of stuff, first of all? It's a long-term uh, strategy. that we. This, so this is not like a quick win. We're not here for like the short run or to make money t- tomorrow, whatever. Well, clearly, because it uh, shut down. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, the, the, the first thing was like, uh, and we did, you know, we did a bit of due diligence in, in that whole process of, of acquiring Free Music Archive. Mm-hmm. You know, the last thing that you want is that you acquire something with lawsuits or, you know, hardware that you can't fix or, or like uh, code that you can't fix. Right. So we did a bit of due diligence first and uh, yeah, we, we yeah we, we saw that the whole backend, like the whole website and the services, etc., needed like a complete overhaul to actually make it work again. Because yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if you remember, but like in 2018 and 2019, things really broke. You know, uh, the FMA was more offline than online, and and some functionalities never worked, and some promises, you know, they they couldn't keep up with those promises. So we said, like, first thing we have to do is really. Uh, keep all the content online. Make sure that that like all the content is available because it is a free archive. Mm-hmm. So we can't just take it off and say like you know go somewhere else. Go to I don't know Gemendo as you mentioned or to to uh, any of the other platforms out there. Um, so what we actually did, and this is this is almost childish, but what we actually did is we made a copy of every single page. There was a free music archive and reposted that page as a static HTML page. Yeah. So, you, you know, we took out the database, but we just actually said like, okay, you were listening to this song. The song is still there, but it's now an HTML page and you can't comment and you can't log in and you can't do anything, but the music is there. Don't worry. People can still listen and download to it. So you could use the same URLs 
on Free Music Archive, and it would still still direct to that same page where you could download that that single track or the uh, or the album. Uh, then the next thing we had to do, of course, was was get a team involved to actually rebuild the whole backend. Mm-hmm. That took a little bit longer than expected, to be honest. It always does. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, we 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 actually uh, we have a technology background, so and we do have like a lot of people in IT that that can help us. But uh, the more people you you ask to get involved, the more different answers you get. So you know, people were saying, like, no, 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 we have to run this on oh, yeah. uh, uh, Amazon, and the others were, no, 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 we have to run this like completely, you know, serverless. And that anyway. So we, we made a choice and we started rebuilding uh, uh, the whole thing. Um, so now for a couple of months now, it's back online with databases. People can log in again. Musicians can upload again. But there are like three main uh, roles on, on, on Free Music Archive. You have, you have the artist. Um, and we said like first, and this is also more from a, a legal perspective, you know, if the artist owns a song, um, then if we help him or her, to actually start uploading again and understand what he signs off with, you know, with Creative Commons, then that's that's a good start because you know you are like super close to the source, like the musician, and you tell them the like you have something like that's called Creative Commons, and with the Creative Commons license, you can actually share your music with the world under your own conditions, and those are the conditions, and you can pick and choose. So that that was the first like thing that we had to do, but then we still had like two major groups on Free Music Archive. One were the net labels. And the other one were like people like yourself, like curating free music archive Mm -hmm. and writing blog posts and saying like, I I really want to do like a story about Latin American music with specific instruments in wintertime, whatever, you know, just a super specific uh, item that you, you know, you want to start blogging about and curating content about and and share that story with with the world. Um, So, that group is still not served by us. So, I, you know, mm-hmm. my apologies. Uh, we, 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 we haven't got there yet, and we will in the upcoming weeks slash months. Uh, because the first thing that we have done now were the musicians, help them. Then the second uh, group were the net labels. Uh, and and I'm, I'm completely honest with you. They were a bit, some of them were super upset with us. Oh, yeah. No, it's, because- that's out of the gate. They were going to be no matter what. Uh, they, yeah, they, but, you know, and, and 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 I I do understand them. If you have the freedom to just upload music from other people, uh, and you have the tooling, and you you know everything is there for a net label to just uh, pick and choose albums, up, upload them to your own free music archive uh, portal where you have your fans and people log in specifically for you as a net label, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and we pause that. We just tell them like. It might be a good idea. It might not be a good idea. We, you know, we don't know yet, but we will just pause your superpowers. Then, of course, there will be a couple of people like go like completely mad, and mm-hmm. and so you know, we had a fair share of um, online fights with it. Well, and what uh, what kind of restrictions when you did pause their their superpowers, as you put it? What uh, what were they able to do? What can't they do? And what are some of the discussions that you had with them about about the changes? Yeah, well, the, the the first thing we said, like, we, we just pause everything just for a couple of months. And then now they are back on track. But Oh, they do have their example, everything back. They, they have everything that they ever done okay. on Free Music Archive is, is back online. Okay. The only thing that uh, is completely different now, and, and that's still some irritates other go like oh man that means uh, additional work for me. Uh, we will ask them to actually, when they want to like, upload new albums from artists that that somewhere in the past said like no 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 that's okay you do that because i don't like that stuff and you're the net label and just go for it we asked the artist once to just go to their page on free music archive claim that page and just read what they are actually uh, uh handing over to the net label like you know from, more from a legal perspective like okay. uh, so that they see a single page where it says like you're now giving net label a b or c the superpowers to manage your albums or to uh, alter your bio or to upload your pictures or, to, you know, just the basic managerial stuff that you can do on Free Music Archive as a net label. Uh, we just asked that once. Uh, some net labels go berserk because they say like, yeah, but, you know, but there, there was like five years ago when the last time that I talked to that artist, so maybe that artist doesn't want to do anything with me mm-hmm. in the future. I'm going like, yeah, true. 
but of course they are the rights holders. So, and and the world is changing slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, if, even in America, but but in Europe there is a thing now that and th- this this is important to everybody, not just to Free Music Archive, but also to YouTube and to Facebook and the other ones. Uh, our European law system is changing uh, now, r- right now, mm-hmm. uh, which means that the platforms themselves are being held responsible for the content that's going to be uploaded to the platform. That's completely different than a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, you would just write in the terms of services like the uploader is super responsible. Uh, you know, it we was will waive just all like a, responsibility. We're not going to do anything lame. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We promise. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but 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 so that's changing rapidly now, and uh, which means that we do have to take some form of responsibility. Which means that uh, uh, one of the things that we can do is reach out to the artist and say, like, "Hey, we have a bunch of curators and we have a bunch of net labels, and they really want to support you. They really want to, you know, m- market you. They have their audience. They they have their their presence on Free Music Archive." Are you okay that they actually take your music or your albums and and use them the way they do? Um, so that that's that's completely different than uh, the FMA from two years ago. Yeah, and I guess I guess I get both sides of it. Yes, you you are absolutely right. I mean, it, you're just checking back for the artist to go. Are you still okay with this person using this stuff that was here before? Makes sense, and it's a one time thing. Uh, on the other hand, too, it, it is really tough because net labels in their existence are are promotion machines on their own accord. They're not in it for the money. They're in it for the music. They promote whatever they can. And yeah, it's and then when you start making it like a business, it's just like, am I doing something wrong? Or why are you telling me I can't just go, this music's great, listen to it, and I want to put out all of their albums online? You know, I mean, that was the thing. If for the longest time, it... it was hard for me to, un- when I first started talking to Creative Commons artists and musicians, um, it was hard for me to understand what a net label was because I just kept thinking it was like a record label, like a regular record label. That was where my mind was. And it's because of the name. It's like, no, they're really just, I'm creating a home where I'm going to keep putting music. It's kind of like a music blog. It's just that they release actual albums and don't do reviews. They just go find stuff and go, you should listen to this. You know. Yeah, abs- absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That, that's also, uh, Tom, one of the reasons why we, this is not where we're going to stop because you were asking like, you know, what's the future of Free Music Archive? Mm-hmm. Uh, we will give back some of these superpowers and then we move beyond where FMA stopped. So we're actually going to help labels or net labels with, with stuff that actually matters, like, you know, insights or maybe even if in the future, like some form of remuneration. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, don't, they don't have to. If they still want to do it like free of charge, great. But maybe they can actually help to, to, to post some premium content or maybe they can help to curate stuff that wasn't curated before. Or maybe they can help to actually run a, uh, a contest or a competition and we actually can, you know, remunerate them for, for their participation. So... Uh, we're not going to stop here, but it's just like, you know, really have to do that laser focus step by step and, and take them through that whole process of uh, where we are today. Mm-hmm. Never over promise. So that's, that's the other thing I'm, I'm, yeah, maybe that's a European thing. I don't know, but I really say like, okay, what I can do today, what I can do tomorrow, what I can do in the, in the next month for you. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully I under promise and over deliver and not the other way around. Right. Yeah. And the thing that you guys also, there are two things that you guys have that I'm really excited for you to come back. And I want to know how you're handling this. Also, this kind of again goes to curation. One of the things that Free Music Archive had that was better than no other uh, free music or Creative Commons music place is their actual labeling of music. I actually discovered genres of music there. Other ones, it's, it just goes, you know, Latin, rock, pop. That's all it says. This was down to shoegaze, garage surf punk, you know, like they, they literally went through all the music genres and would, and people would suggest other ones and it would be, it would be, and the search function for it was also really good. So what, what are your plans for real specific types of music or even managing where they go? Are are you going to rely that solely on the curators? Are you going to add new features? Well, we, we still, I think you, uh, b- because I, I listened to uh, one of your podcasts with Shay and, and, and uh, one or two other ones, so I'm, I'm maybe just messing up who you talk to, but um, in one of the interviews that you did, uh, uh, there was a, 
I think it was like a, you, you called it like a robot company, like an AI company helping them with tagging and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can remember. And um, uh, so we, we're we're testing that for many years now because okay. you know our other company, the the the, the parent company of Free Music Archive now, Tribe of Noise, is is uh, uh, also like super heavy on tech. So uh, we've been testing all kinds of AI. We have been testing with all kinds of universities, like how can you help like real oh. human beings to curate in a, in a fashionable way? And so far, it has been very disappointing because I have people working for us with, with what we call golden ears. You know, they, they mm-hmm. hear stuff and they know exactly like, ah, that's the drum solo from 9080 from that band, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, no way that there is an algorithm doing that right. in, in that same fashion. Um, and and we also run tests like every half year. We just go to an AI company, hand them over like a thousand songs, and then tell them like, okay, you know, start curating this or or tagging this or just surprise us. You know, come with some 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 form of metadata that we can actually reuse and, and make FMA better or Tribe of Noise better. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, it, it it's still disappointing, but but I do see that there is it. You know, it is improving. So somewhere down the line, I I hope that the real human beings who actually want to go for the sub 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 genre of a specific genre will will stick on doing that, yeah. um, and then uh, hopefully some AI will will connect the dots and say like, oh, but wait a minute, if this is sub 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 genre and it does really well in Chicago, then I know another sub 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 genre in South Africa, and actually. You know, their drum solos are very similar. So let's connect those two groups. Yeah. That would be super funny to just, you know, make those kind of like uh, uh, references uh, uh, in, uh, with technology because that's something that real human beings can't do because it's just too much data going on there. Well, the one that I thought did it the best was um, Songza. If you remember that at all, Songza was, yeah. 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 And then they got acquired by Google and then Google didn't really know what to do with it or didn't use it that much. And now they're not with Google. <laughs> like that's the best one. Like I was actually kind of excited when Google got them. And then um, it just didn't, it didn't, I, it never panned out. I don't know. It just never seemed the same again. I mean, they sometimes would go, here's the mood or you listen to this type of stuff at 8 p.m. last week. You know, that was about yeah. the extent of it. Whereas Songza was awesome. It would really I, just I, I think find best, what you wanted. The, be- the best ones, Tom, are not about the technology, actually, but they're the ones that, that actually are willing to listen and to adopt. Yeah. So uh, when we have like our, our music, uh, uh, head of our music department, the Tribe of Noise, he's, he's like a producer. He was, has like, he had his own label when he was like 14 or 15. He's, you know, he's still opening act for, for like big conferences and, and festivals in, uh, in, in Europe. And um, so he, he knows a thing or two about music. And when he talks to the techies, mm-hmm. um, he has to convince them like how you listen to music and how you perceive things like energy level in a song. So for example, if, if a video editor wants to use a song, they are using completely different things than 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 uh music supervisors do you know it's it's more about the energy level in a video uh uh scene or uh you know a mood based kind of 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 setting yeah that's and 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 try to translate that to a computer program or an algorithm that's that's difficult and then of course if that's done by a berlin based um uh spin out from a university then uh, nine out of ten, those are like uh, white male, uh, raised in Europe, uh, uh, high level, university level kind of students who come up with all these algorithms. And then if I would feed that same kind of information with the same uh, coders to South Africa, for example, mm-hmm. or or uh, Canada, they have a completely different mindset. They have a different culture. They grew up in a different setting. They have, you know, they listen to music in a completely different way. And you have to feed that robot mm-hmm. or you have to feed that algorithm with with stuff from, yeah, some, some reference marks. In the meantime, you know, just, just mingle. Mingle real human beings and algorithms and then have fun and see what comes out of it. And maybe, you know, we end up with an app where we just uh, turn this into like a, a pop quiz where we just challenge the, the robots for, for, for whatever reason. I don't right. know. But uh, no, the real curators will be, you know, the real human beings will, will still curate FMA for, for the upcoming uh, 
years to come. Well, and what you were saying there too also brings um, brings to mind the real value that Free Music Archive have had, which is built upon its cure or its uh, its tagging and logging and search functionalities of the different types of music. Is that I don't know what happened. I think maybe it was when uh, the FMA. Uh, joined with uh, Vimeo for maybe like a year where they gave them the whole library was available in Vimeo. So filmmakers could download the songs and add them to video or they had, they had the database there, but suddenly filmmakers discovered the free music archive and would go through and search stuff. And it just kept going and going like most of our stuff, my band stuff got used in tons of short films and video games. And it was great. And that was, that's one of, first of all, the beauty of creative commons is that they were able just to do that. All they have to do is attribute you for that. And then we'd start getting all these hits and I'd be like, where's all this traffic coming from? And I'd find it and it'd be from a video or somebody would go, we want to use this commercially. And then they would buy a license from you or work something out so that you'd actually get paid. That's the beauty of it. But that's, yeah, that's the thing is um, you were talking about looking at ways to monetize and everything. The one thing that was difficult was when people, when filmmakers are short, uh, filmmakers would find our stuff and would want to use it commercially. I would have to do it myself. Do you guys have any plans to actually, you said you were going to work with musicians or creators and net labels and all that. Do you have plans to go, okay, what if somebody does want to license this? Is that one of the yeah. things that you're looking to do? Yeah, I, th I, I think that's, that's where uh, the connection between the, the tri tribe of noise a free music archive really kicks in. So the the marriage with with Kidsplit uh, was a bit of a strange one. I, I, in, uh, what was their? I'm sorry. What was their? Uh, what did they do? I, I meant to ask that earlier. It, I it's, knew it's, of the it's name. A, it's a, a video rental or a video equipment rental uh, uh, place. Okay. And uh, so you know, camera rentals or or like you know, everything you need for for uh, shooting a video or, or uh, photography. Oh, so they were going from the other angle. They were the they were filmmakers going. Now we have an archive of music for films. No. Oh, okay. it was Never mind. actually actually, <laughs> actually, uh, actually a little bit uh, uh, probably probably even even more simplistic. Um, if you type in the words "free your music" on Google, mm -hmm. you end up on Free Music Archive. Right. Which, which means that, let's say, half a million people a day download two to three terabytes of content of free music ar uh, archive every single day, mm -hmm. which means that those people are probably filmmakers, videographers, documentary, blah, blah, blah. So the audience that they serve with video rental and equipment rental is actually the same audience that, that wants to download free music from free music archive. Okay. If you put a lot of banners on Free Music Archive saying like rent your camera here, rent your camera here, then you know you might turn over more money. Um, maybe there was a bigger plan behind it, but but you know if we downsize it to like what was the direct link between uh, KidSplit and Free Music Archive, I think it was the link for using the search the search engine optimization of Free Music Archive to attract more people to rent more stuff at. At kids split. That was my first uh, thought when it got bought is they were just buying the name. Kind of like the way that um, Odeo was bought by some other company because it was the podcasting company that turned into yeah. Twitter and they bought Odeo and then just was like, what? We have the name. And it's like, what do you do? I have no idea. Um, yeah. Okay. But by the way, luckily enough, so uh, 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 because I don't want to end up with, with, with this, that this sounds like a negative thing from, uh, from, from KidSplit. Oh, no. They did try to manage uh, Free Music Archive. They did put in the money to make sure that, that Free Music Archive didn't die on us. So uh, in the end, it survived for an additional year and, and, and we could acquire it. So uh, kudos for KidSplit. But uh, uh, I, I think that was the, 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 basic, the basic way in for them. For Tribe of Noise, it's, it's different. So Tribe of Noise roughly represents, um, before we acquired uh, Free Music Archive, uh, 35,000 artists in 190 plus countries, independents. Uh, we helped them uh, with Creative Commons licensing to get their music in front of people who license for documentaries, films, videos, advertisements, you know, any professional use for, for, for music. And uh, our biggest problem to uh, uh, promise to them, not problem, promise, is if we actually license music and make money, 
we share that money with you as a participating artist. Um, if we don't make money, don't give up your daytime job. If we don't make money, you know, you, you don't uh, make any money. Otherwise, we share that money with you. So now think about Free Music Archive. It's all these people who just upload uh, under a Creative Commons with some some um, uh, uh, terms and conditions attached. You know, you, you're all rationing saying like you have to attribute me as an artist mm -hmm. or uh, you can't use it non uh, commercially or I don't want you to make any uh, derivatives or, you know, there are a couple of things that you can that you can put to the Creative Commons license or add to the Creative Commons license. And now all of a sudden, there is a second part of this of this journey where you can say like, okay, this is what I do on Free Music Archive, but Triumph of Noise actually has a um, uh, uh, an online store where they actually sell licenses without my interference. So it's pre-licensed, pre-cleared, pre-priced to an audience that actually wants to use it for a commercial video or wants to use it for an advertisement or whatever. Uh, so we now see that some of these artists that are actually were on Free Music Archive just with non-commercial, non-derivative, like, you know, full swing. Uh, you can listen, share, and download, and that's it. Um, and now looking at some of the models that Tribe of Noise uh, has been applying for the last 12 years, they say like, mm -hmm. okay, but for like some other songs that we have, we actually want to test drive and see if, if we can actually make a few bucks from licensing it to a YouTuber or a podcaster or um, even big brands like, you know, Adidas or Coca-Cola or whatever. So let, let's, let's see if we can also do that. So it's just adding more options without uh, pushing them into one model because I can, I can, I can, I'm not going to tell you, but I can tell you a couple of brands that that will come in for free and then, uh, you know, you're in there for the freemium model and for sharing and for all the good reasons with, with Creative Commons. And then somewhere down the line, they say like, okay, just sign sign here and all of your rights are exclusively signed to one company and, and you're like, there's a vendor lock-in kind of situation that you don't want to end up in. So right. all the stuff we do is uh, non-exclusive. All the stuff that we do is an, a choice, an option that we offer to the musicians. Take it, leave it, test it, don't test it, whatever you want, you know, just go for it. And we just, you know, throw stuff at the wall and see if it sticks. And if it does stick and it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, you know, just don't use it or don't use it anymore. And the sites are still going to stay separate. The Tribe of Noise, obviously, is yeah. going to be under the Tribe of Noise moniker. Yeah. yeah. Well, we actually have, we, we actually, uh, um, uh, so one of the things that we've done in the last couple of months, and you might have seen that in some of the newsletters or, or the Twitter posts that we've done, we teamed up with a organization called uh, Grant for the Web. Not sure if you've seen that, but Grant for the Web is an organization um, that is backed by Creative Commons, uh, Mozilla, and uh, Coil. And uh, Coil is a uh, platform where they try, and that, that's also what Grant for the Web is trying, is try to find new ways um, and just testing. You know, it's it's not like this has to be the way, but they're just testing dozens of models to say like, if there's something on the internet and you own the intellectual property, let's see if we can not just share it with the world, but if there is a way to monetize this, and that can be like a um, uh, the, the the PayPal donate button, but that can also be like a model where you pay per second or a model where you become a co-owner of the intellectual property. So, so they're testing like dozens of models just to see, does this work for this specific content? Games, music, photos, uh, books, uh, podcasts, you know, the, the whole lot. And, um, and they're not just doing it with words. They actually have $100 million to spend on testing this to see if this sticks. Mm -hmm. Because they want to get rid of the two big business models that we have today. One of them, of course, is advertisement-driven right. uh, revenue. And the other one is uh, subscription-based, the paywalls, where you can't access any content unless you put your credit card in. Mm -hmm. um, they want to offer like a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth model that actually is way more attractive for the audience and also may way more attractive for people that actually own a photo or a song or or like a lyric or whatever to to play around and see if it monetizes and we got involved with them a couple of months ago um and they actually you know we we had a plan to say like 
one of the things that we can do is if you have a music page of an artist, why don't we put um, a little piece of code on that page and then ask for all the people that actually are already with this, with, with Coil, with this, with, this, uh, with this service, to go to the page and just stay on the page and listen to music, read the bio, um, uh, listen to all the curated content on there. And for every second that they actually are on that page, Small amounts of, of, of money will automatically travel oh, I from do remember this. from their wallet to this to this page. Baby steps, you know, because you know, you, you, you of course you need a big audience to pull this off if you really want to make money. But just the idea to get money per second is is a really fun mechanism. Just what can I offer to you? What can I offer to Tom so that Tom stays for an additional minute on my web page mm -hmm. and at small amounts without without me, you know, uh, putting in my credit card details or whatever, automatically transfers small amounts of money to to uh, to the website. You actually described that to me better than because I remember the coil thing and I was trying to remember what it was and then. Um, I had looked into it and I was a little confused at first because it kind of sounded like another donation platform at first. I guess I didn't understand. You actually explained it in a way where I was like, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. It re at first, what it reminded me of was Flatter. Um, I don't know if you remember that Ab service. No, 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 abs absolutely. So abs so this, this uh, in, in some cases, uh, in, in some ways, it actually goes beyond Flatter. But the cool thing uh, also for Flatter and also for Coil is that uh, and this is what I really believe in uh, because I'm 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 an advocate for open like like in in general open content open governments open everything and uh, what I really believe in is that if um, an end user like somebody who uses the internet during the day to listen to music to read articles from great journalists mm -hmm. to download a photo because they want to use it in a powerpoint presentation to you know do all these things on the internet during your normal day um if if they had like uh, uh um some amount to spend on a monthly basis and I, let, let's let's say it's five bucks that you want to spend five bucks but you say like um i'm willing to spend that money without any hassle over the platforms that I use, my, my daily search for music and, 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 and stock photography and reading articles and donating, donate buttons or whatever, mm -hmm. but without me filling out details, just, you know, exactly. automatically, it just, it just, the money moves. And every month I spend five bucks and it's gone. And I know that people who actually have that content are getting remunerated for offering that content to me. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. I do too. Uh, yeah, and and it's and it's also so much better than than because I'm also a big fan of services like Spotify and Tidal and the other ones, but I pay like roughly ten bucks per month to one single service, and then I'm annoyed because if I want to go for that specific album of the Beastie Boys, I can't find that album of the Beastie Boys on Spotify, and I go like, man, I just paid ten bucks for this month for Spotify, and my my content that I want to listen to now isn't there them mm -hmm. in this way i can just browse you know the open internet and go to another website and spend 20 cents for the album of of, of uh, the beastie boys and maybe you see a really cool picture that i want to use in a powerpoint presentation tomorrow and 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 just five cents travels to that to that owner of that picture mm -hmm. so i love that system and it's it's you need uh, like a lot of people who have that, who are willing to spend that five bucks a month, of course, because otherwise those micro payments will never end up, uh, uh, just never end up as a, as a salary to, to artists in general. Mm -hmm. And of course you need like enough platforms to join where they actually say like, you need maybe not YouTube, but there there is one that's called Cinnamon TV and Cinnamon TV actually mm -hmm. similar to Free Music Archive is also testing this system. There is one doing it for animated GIFs. There is one doing it for uh, journalism. There is one, you know, they have hundreds of websites already participating. What I love about it is, in I think if you're going to make a service like this, and I think this is important, is that I find stuff all the time where it's like, oh, you could monetize yourself by doing this. Well, this is my test. I explain it to somebody else going, hey, this site goes, you can use this. All you have to do is click here, sign up, go to that, do this, put in this information, do that, and then come back. And then now every time you come here, if you like something, you can click on that again and do it. 
no effort should be asked of anybody that is a fan of yours is basically what I'm saying. And I always feel like so much of it relies on the person that comes to your site. When I go to medium right now and it goes, you have two articles left. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't want to have to pay for another one. You know, it's, it's just, that means I have to sign up. I have to do something. I have to add my card. I have to do, and I'm just like, I just won't go. I'll go, I'll, I'll do another search and look for it somewhere else. And, and that's, and I'm as guilty of it. And I, but I think it's not right of me to go, Hey, I'm posting my web comics online and I need you to go through this process so I can get money and continue to keep doing it. Some people are happy to do it, but I feel bad making them go through hoops just because I want them to pay me to do my own stuff. And, and that's yeah. what I love about the coil thing. I think, and the way you described it is awesome. I love that it's like, it's like streaming on Spotify, but like wherever. It, it's just happening in the background and you're getting paid yeah. for your looks and your no, that, 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 that You know, that's, that's uh, what I really like uh, uh, about the system. And once again, it's because I don't want to sound like th- that this is the, the, the new big hype. I don't want to overpromise. It's early days, but it's a model that, that has momentum. It does. There's an organization behind it that, that can push money into directions to say like, Oh, if this doesn't work, let's test this one, or let's address, um, or let's try to apply this to to journalism, or let's try to apply this to uh, photographers, or you know, they, they they can really go into many directions to to make this work for a lot of people, mm-hmm. and um, the same thing for for uh, how we help musicians. We we found out many years ago because that that. Uh, uh, one-stop shop, uh, uh, music shop that we have for, for stock, uh, stock, not stock music, but it's the same mechanism that you just can buy proper original music from real artists. Yeah. But by just going to a website, click, find, swipe credit card, download, and continue your project. Like, you know, easy step, bam. And uh, when we had musicians signing up, they were sending us some really cool original music, like, proper original stuff that you could never hear on Spotify or whatsoever. But it, in some cases, it was also not the music that you would listen to, for example, if you were going dining or shopping, like background music services. It was super aggressive or the, or the lyrics were like, you know, in there. And um, and we had other people who said like, but actually what I can do is I can actually deliver you good quality music, well recorded, and it will be suitable for a hotel chain or it will be suitable for a chain of restaurants. And we're like, ha, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's say if we have enough musicians on on Free Music Archive, a tribe of noise that can actually bundle together and we curate music playlist for shopping malls or we curate music for all the other kind. Under Creative Commons, in a way that if we curate and offer, you know, it's normalized the music, and there's a journey between the, uh, the the Monday morning sounds different than the Wednesday afternoon. You know, we we, right. we do the whole work like a radio show, and then we offer that package to like a, a, a retail group, and we say like, okay, you have a hundred stores, you pay twenty dollars per month per store, and we deliver you great quality music, and that money is the it, it is is shared directly with the participating artist. Without ASCAP and BMI and and record labels and publishers, like directly, some of the money goes to the musicians, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Huh, this is super interesting because the the retail owner saves money because it's cheaper to go directly to the source, of course, than to pay all the the the, the middlemen. The musician gets more because it's you know we we monitor what music is being played and the artist gets paid directly or that same month as opposed to like two years down the line." Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we started doing that model in 2012-ish, 13, 2012, 2013. Oh, really? And, and it's still going and growing throughout Europe, and we have some customers in the States now. Mm-hmm. And it's super funny. And with Creative Commons music, so, you know, when we, when we talked to Creative Commons headquarters and explained this model, they go like, damn, this, you know, <laughs> of course you can go commercial with, with Creative Commons the only thing, you know, you package in a different way. You you actually, people are paying for the service and not per right. se for, for the curated, uh, uh, for the for the content license itself. It goes back again to the one of the reasons Creative Commons started was because of music downloading. Well, music downloading isn't really a thing anymore. 
you know, it it it's it was people downloading music and sharing it. And now it's just like, oh, I just have Spotify. You know, it's, you don't have to do it anymore. Now downloading music, it's like it's good to have your license on there, but they're only downloading it to use it for something. They don't want to have to go, oh, I have to make sure this MP3 is available on my phone. You know, it's but the uh, going back to what you were saying about the restaurant thing, that that's also another aspect is uh, going. Uh, how to get paid and it's not necessarily going it has to be used online it's used in the background uh, i've actually our band has actually had our stuff in a a uh, catalog like that for years and it's funny um it took me a while to realize why they kept denying some of our songs and then exactly what you said it's like some of them be like well that's not going to play in the background of a hotel in poland you know that's <laughs> that's way too aggressive but but that's speaking to that that's really neat that i get paid um, a certain amount and see that stuff like our music is in the background in Poland. And on top of it, what happens is, is that explained or it, it explained later on why we kept getting these weird shazams of our songs in different parts of countries and, it, you know, places all over the world. And I'm like, why would they shazam a song? Like, are they, li-? and then it occurred to me, oh yeah, they'd be in this public place and go, what song is this? And they'd hold up their shazam and find it and then download it off of you know, iTunes, like this cycle still happened. Like those are the reasons that I love creative commons because of that. Yep. And the reason it's getting played is because it's also a way to get around Gemma laws because you can only, you have to pay so much for if there's like more, what is it like more than 11 people in a room? Uh, you have to like pay Gemma fees or something like that. If you have music playing. Uh, it's, it, it depends per country. So that, that's the other thing. Like, you know, in, in, in the States, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You have your ASCAP and your, your, your BMI, your CSEC. Yeah. Uh, many of those music providers, they include it in a fee. So it's like, a, a, you know, a, a all-in-one package that you just throw at the, at, at the end customer. Yeah. In Europe, every single customer, uh, sorry, every single country has its own ASCAP, has its own. Mm-hmm. We, we have something in Europe called neighboring rights organizations. So they mm-hmm. uh, they actually collect money for the performing artists as opposed to the composer or the, the lyricist. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and they have like all the different rules. So in some cases, it's like, you know, if it's not your family or it's not your relati- relatives, uh, you do have to pay no matter what. They actually in the Netherlands tried to, to force... Uh, 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 taxi drivers to pay because they go like, <laughs> hey, if you put on the radio in your taxi, that's a that's a professional kind of environment. Somebody, you know, in the back is enjoying it and therefore you're offering a service and therefore you have to pay us. Well, guess what? Taxi drivers were not willing to pay for it. So uh, that that didn't work. But every single country has that has that uh, thing to it. Uh, it does take a lot of, of like uh, resources on our side because we have to um, – convince like 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 countries that creative commons actually is an alternative for mm-hmm. you know rights managed music fire all these performing rights organizations so, so for the last 10 years i have been spending a lot of time explaining it to many organizations that 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 that, that creative commons has that um is a legal entity to actually share content use content we, we still have to explain to a lot of people that there there are subsets of creative commons that can actually be used for commercial use so a lot of people around the world still still relate to to creative commons as that yeah of course that you know that the, the bunch of fool, foolish people that just give away their stuff right no it's not and and you know to be completely open, because I'm also the, the chairman of the board of an organization in the Netherlands called uh, uh, Open Netherlands, mm. which is the Dutch representatives of Creative Commons. Nice. Um, so we work a lot with, with, with Creative Commons licensing and, and open uh, licenses in general. And uh, I, I think just a lot of people still need to see that we need open alternatives in this market today, we really need them because musicians and how the internet is moving forward and also with Facebook being a silo and Google being a silo. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's almost like if you're not one of them, you're against them. So it's super difficult for creative to, to move through the internet and, and try to, you know, uh, determine how to make money how to give away stuff how to you know it's, it's super tough for for a lot of people and we have to explain to all these groups that there are great alternatives with with open licensing mm-hmm. from 
give it away for free all the way to make maybe not a shitload of money but you know <laughs> make decent cash right uh and and i can and i'm super proud we we do have artists on on, on, on tribe of noise and now also from free music archive who, mm-hmm. who came from free music archive still are on the free music archive but also just embrace some of the business models that we have on tribe of noise and go like this is so fun some of my stuff is just moving around the globe free of charge some of the stuff people have to pay for mm-hmm. otherwise tribe of noise will tell them to buy a license so there you go yeah and now one last thing how sure. uh, what is so what's the what's the date what are the plans where are you guys at with free music archive when can we expect it to not be a login <laughs> you know special test section of the site for us curators when's it going to be be available to everyone yeah i i I think in the just just early january we will we will start to focus on the on the curators so uh uh, that that's that's next on the agenda so then the net labels are getting back to superpowers now now so we're sending out a newsletter probably next week uh telling them to log in again see if everything works see how they can can do then the curators who also had like uh, functionalities like blog po- you know writing a blog post and adding mixes and adding songs we will start doing that from from um start rebuilding that in uh, in january so that that will come on uh, uh, pretty soon my my biggest journey i think with free music archive is that what i would love to see and, and and this is something that we do on Tribe of Noise for the last 12 years as well. I really want to empower the individual musician. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are a couple of beautiful platforms, like like you have Bandcamp. And right. uh, I think that SoundCloud is is on the right track again. And, there, you know, there are a couple of platforms that I really love. Uh, but what I also see, and that has to do with a lot of boring legal stuff, is that musicians no longer understand what they're signing to. So terms of services, end mm-hmm. user license agreements, all that stuff that nobody reads and they just click and go for it. All these aggregators out there where where musicians just say like, of course I want my music on, on TikTok. Of course I want my music on Spotify. And they just sign with with an aggregator without understanding that they actually just signed away their uh, exclusivity for administrative rights to one party and go like oh we really have to be on the front there help the artist and maybe create a portal where they just have the tooling and the power with you know with 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 simplistic switches where they can actually switch services on and grant rights to for example and let's say that they can via fma grant rights to bandcamp and if bandcamp in the future does something that they don't like revoke the rights by just switching it back so give them like a a dashboard where they can just in in plain english or in plain spanish or in plain portuguese Mm -hmm. start to understand what can i actually you know i have the superpowers i own my music what can I actually do? What can I test? How can I revoke rights? How can I grant rights? And what does it mean if I grant a right to CD Baby, for example? Right. And all of, all of a sudden, nobody can access my content on YouTube because by accident, I actually also checked that box where it says like administrative rights for YouTube content ID will be handed by CD Baby. And I had no idea that that happened. Well, and the other thing too now is uh, with YouTube actually making its music service YouTube, that makes it even more difficult. So to get on the Google platforms, you actually have to put your stuff on YouTube. That's that's their music service. And so now, of hey, course, ID rights are going to, uh, content ID rights are going to be all kinds of confusing. One little trade secret. Yeah. Did you know that you can't upload Creative Commons content to YouTube's content ID? No. It's not allowed. But yet they have a Creative Commons option on their videos. That's weird. <laughs> huh. I did not know that. <laughs> I'm afraid <Okay>. I've done that. <laughs> okay. So that, that that's something that we have to fix in 2021 as well. Huh. Uh, to reach out to, to YouTube and Google in general and to say like, guys, come on. 
you know, even if we can use uh, the content ID as a shadow database just to make sure that nobody is messing around with Creative Commons, give us some some superpowers to actually administrate this uh, in in the correct way. But no, you you are actually not allowed to upload any Creative Commons content to YouTube's content ID at the moment. And that's because of the services like uh, like. TuneCore. Uh, and, yeah, and, and, yeah, because yeah. to upload it, they go, well, to upload it, we're going to put it in all these services for you. And you don't have a choice. I, I, I used to use a service that would let me pick and choose. But now because of like Google switching to YouTube, their music platform and all that kind of stuff, all of, everything is by default. And basically it goes, well, if you don't select this, then we can't distribute this for you. And that's the other yeah. thing too. Yeah, there needs to be something where I don't want to have to go through some service just to upload. But then, of course, you don't want it to be – I know why they're doing it. They're doing it so it's not like archive.org where it just becomes a dumping ground for we're putting everything I record up here. You know, it eh. – <laughs> I don't have an answer have, for this. I'm have, just thinking out loud. Give, we, have to, we have to give some power back. Th there needs to be some leverage. So we yeah. have to give more power back to the artists. I really would love to, you know, uh, embrace all the curators, the net labels, etc., to do what they do because they do it really well and with a lot of passion. So that, that's the other cool thing. Like I speak to net labels and they explain me all the stuff they do for an artist. Like, you know, they they will change their bio. They will ask the artist for a better picture, you know, high yep. rest. They they will go through all the licensing trouble to say like, ah, maybe you actually are not the owner because, you know, the drummer actually owns the record, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they do so much work for the artist. Um, you know, we have to cherish this and we have to really uh, uh, enable them to and, and help them. And hopefully in the in the future, are, there are some fun models that, that actually remunerate all the work that they that they do in the background that nobody notices. So, um, so much to do still, but uh, yeah, empowering people, making sure that there is a, a, uh, that, that a leverage between some of these like major platforms out there that will just say like, it's our way or no way. Um, we have to leverage that. And in the meantime, and I will do that boring uh, part, uh, we have to take into account that the whole, a legal aspect in this world of copyright law is changing dramatically in the upcoming yes. two to three years throughout Europe. Um, so if we can, you know, stay ahead of the curve and actually whisper to the European Union, like, hey, Creative Commons, have a look at Creative Commons. If right. we can keep doing that, that, um, that will be my task as well for the upcoming two years. Well, I'm looking forward to the Free Music, music Archive opening up again because it was just such a huge platform for me personally. Uh, like, listening to music and also putting out music like it did so much good so i'm glad to see it come back and i want to thank you so much for talking with me today i'm so glad i got to meet you absolutely more than welcome <laughs>